Hey everyone, welcome to Solo Hits Recap, and today we are going to be going over all the solo hits that I did this month. The month we are going to be looking at today is February 2019. This month's focus was hitting higher on the wall. In this video, I'll go over why I learned this shot, the drills I did, what I learned from it, and what you guys should take away. In the last five years or so, I spent most of my time learning how to hit with pace. Overall, I didn't hit as hard as a lot of other people did, so I spent a lot of time working on my technique and learning how to hit harder. Now that I feel more comfortable with the amount of pace I can generate, I started looking for a way to vary and control the pace during a match. Whether I am playing against someone who hits the ball extremely hard or want to keep the pace of the game always changing, having a high shot added to my game would be very beneficial. Lots of juniors or young squash players learn this shot from a really young age, so this is a very fundamental shot for them. I'll go over the three solo hits and then kind of recap of what I learned from it, and then I'll let you know how it's influenced my game so far. So the first drill I did when starting to learn how to hit high was the 4x4 drill. There's four different stages and you have to hit four shots in a row in order to advance to the next stage. I'll cover in another video the 4x4 drill more in depth. Overall, this is a really standard drill and this is actually one of my favorite drills, especially when I'm learning something new. My first goal with this drill was just trying to get a feeling of hitting high with a full swing. I noticed that planting your feet and being balanced really worked well for this shot. Bending the knees was also really important and helping getting that arc to help that ball get into the back corner. I noticed that the balls that I hit tighter were because I had enough spacing between me and the ball. I've struggled with my spacing between me and the ball, and this is something I'm currently working on, so this drill was really good in helping me do so. You'll notice as the workouts go on, I start increasing the height that I get on the ball, so I start hitting higher on the wall, not just right above the surface line, but almost halfway point or even a little higher up than that, and this was really nice to go back and look at afterwards. I found that for the forehand, it was tougher to get that full swing in. In order to get that full swing in, I needed to prep my racket better. I had a feeling as I was doing this drill that I probably have trouble applying this to my match just due to how loose most of these shots were coming out. In this drill, I pretty much alternated between hitting a hard driving length and a high shot. What I found was that you really start to see the value of hitting the high arcing shot because the next hard shot was usually really hard to hit afterwards. This drill was also very good in getting my feet starting to move a little bit more than the last one, and this moving in and out of a shot helped me get a more of a feel of the ball. Using targets when you're solo hitting is always a really good idea. It gives you something to focus on, and it's really fun to hit. This drill felt really nice, and I started getting into a little bit of a groove on how it was feeling. Also having targets to hit and hitting them was a really good feeling as well. With the backhand specifically, I found that I could have opened my racket face a little bit more to hopefully create a little bit more arch on it. In this drill, it was pretty much just hit between the margins, hitting high shots. You can really see in this drill that consistency is a big problem here. Trying to control the amount of weight on the ball, as well as trying to keep it within the margins, was actually extremely tough. But I did hit some good shots. This is a good example of when you're learning a shot and you think you're doing well, you're hitting all the shoes, and then you just change the drill a little bit and all of a sudden it kind of all falls apart. But it's all good because at least this shows you what you need to work on and how it's going to kind of look in a game. The other drill I did for this workout was the four straight and then the one high cross. I'm not sure if I'm a huge fan of this drill with the shot I was trying to learn. I spent about half the time just trying to get into a rhythm with the drill and it was actually extremely difficult and it felt very off. Hitting four shots straight with pace sometimes puts you in a really, really bad position and it's very hard to cross off that. In my opinion, I think this drill needs a lot of control, which I don't have yet with the high shot. So we're on to the last workout here and this drill is hitting three hard and then one high. This one took a while to get into the groove of hitting three hard and then switching to a soft high shot. Overall, this whole process of learning how to hit higher on the wall has actually helped me gain a lot more control with my hard shots. This drill is a really good way to see how your high balls bounce because the ball is much warmer, which simulates more like a game of how the shots would come out. Some of these balls were good enough to apply pressure, so I was pretty happy overall with how things are progressing. This next one, I decided to try to change up the range a little bit instead of hitting all from the backcourt. 
This one was feed before the T and hit too high after that. I was actually having a lot of difficulties with this one. The angle change and the weight change completely threw off how I was supposed to swing and getting the right feel of everything. It took a little while before it all kind of just felt okay. The change in angle and the weight from being a lot closer to the front of the court made this very difficult. It feels like much more of a control shot hitting it from the mid court, whereas in the back court, it feels more flowy and you're almost hitting like a length off this. The second shot usually ended up being better. And this is kind of useful because this is more of like a defending shot from the back, which I was pretty pleased to see. That covers the three solo hits I did to try to learn how to hit higher on the wall. And now I'll go over what this shot has done for me and how I use it in a match. The ability to hit high on the wall has added another element to my game. It gives me another shot that I can hit from the back. It allows me more time to get back to the tee and allows me to change the pace of a game. Now I'm not totally confident in using this in my match. As you can see from the margins in the front court and the four straight and cross drill, there's a lot of consistency issues with this. In my matches, I would try this shot and sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't and the balls are usually left pretty open. Overall, about two or three shots that I hit like this ended up pressuring my opponents. And actually it helped my driving length, which helped it become a lot tighter, which would actually win me a lot of points. What I really found the value of this shot was when I was recovering from getting pressured. A lot of my recovering shots where I was defending ended up being a lot tighter and it allowed me a lot of time to get back to the tee and get back into the rally. Overall, I think the shot needs a little bit of work. If I was really late to the ball or my stance was off, then I would end up hitting a pretty bad shot. In the future, I would probably like to come back to this to work on the, some consistency things, as well as hitting off my off foot as well, with the forehand side especially. Actually, what I also really liked about this shot was that it allowed me time to move back to the tee and even step up to look for the volley. I started winning a lot of points and created a lot of opportunities that I necessarily didn't have when I was just hitting the ball hard all the time. I'm gonna lay out what I learned were the keys to success to hitting high deep shots. Most of these things are pretty basic, but become even more important when you're trying to learn to hit a nice controlled shot like this. Number one, you gotta plant well and swing fully through the ball. Bending the knees will help create that arc on the ball and what I've noticed is that it pretty much needs to hit the last quarter of the sidewall in the back in order to be effective. If you're looking to add more patience to your game, more variety of the pace or type of shots you hit, help tightening up your shots, help controlling the overall pace of a match, or looking for improving your defending shots, then I would suggest spending the time to learning how to hit high and just starting to feel it out because you'll start to see some immediate differences right away. I don't think this needs too many more solo hits to get better at this. This is definitely something you could work on while you're playing with other players. I think I would probably need around six more solo hits, so nine in total, to feel more confident and to be able to implement in my game better. Anything less, you'll probably not be able to hit this shot very well, but you'll start to see improvement in a lot of other parts of your game. Thank you guys for watching Solo Hits Recap. I hope you guys enjoyed this month's Solo Hits. And if you guys liked the video, squash that like button, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you know when the next video is posted. Let me know in the comments below anything else you guys would like to see and how hitting higher has worked out for you guys.